Oh, hello there. It's me, Jared, BuzzFeed Multiplayer's resident Fall Guys expert and winner extraordinaire. Yes! I did it! Yes! And today, I'm here to share with you at least one tip to win every level in Fall Guys. Oh, okay, you wanna do this? Let's go! Ta-da! Let's go. Let's start off by going over all of the race levels. My personal favorite being Dizzy Heights. The main trick to coming out on top in this level is just that you have to go with the flow of these circles. Don't fight the rotation, run with the rotation. I know it might seem counterintuitive to not just go forward the entire time, but just this one trick alone puts me ahead of the pack 99.9% .9 of the time on this level. Next up, let's talk Hit Parade. This first part with the beams does take some practice, but the trick to getting it right is landing directly in the middle of those orange beams and then not jumping. At the end of the level, I found that the easiest way to get up this slope is to just stick to the side, so those bouncy rods don't go all the way to the edges, so while it might not be the fastest way up, it's definitely the safest. Next up might be the level that makes the most people the angriest, but it's Seesaw. My main trick here is to just transition between all the seesaws with the least amount of jumping possible. That means watching and anticipating for the seesaws to tilt and then hopping over that little gap that they create right as they cross over each other. I haven't done this one much myself, but I've heard from friends that if you do have to jump pretty far, that diving is the best way to land. Evidently landing parallel to the seesaw on your belly guarantees that you'll get up faster than if you just land on your feet and then topple over. Oh, DoorDash, I really thought you were all luck and no skill, but turns out there's a secret to ya. It turns out that the fake doors are actually slightly shorter than the real doors. It's pretty hard to tell mid-match, but with the last three doors, it's super obvious. My main tactic for this one is to just hang a little bit back and wait to see which doors do get broken and then run through those. I also seem to have a lot of success with jumping and diving through the open doors, especially when they're very crowded. My character just gets pushed up and over everyone else and I don't get left behind. And here I am bunny hopping, trying to catch up with the person who's currently in first place. Bunny hopping is the act of jumping right as you touch the ground again, and it's definitely the most useful on slanted surfaces, but it's generally used for a way to just gain speed and try to catch up with people. Next up is Gate Crash, which almost sounds like a better name for DoorDash. The main trick for this one is that the gates go up and down the same way and at the same speed every time you play this level. So just look ahead and see which gates are going to be open by the time that you get to them, rather than heading towards the gates that are open as you walk up to them. Also a tip for the end of the level, you don't have to just keep running forward down the slippery slope. You can backpedal and make it easier to time your jump over those last few gates. Ooh, it's the Whirly Gig, another one of my personal favorites. These spinning poles that you have to deal with throughout the level are always easier to jump over if you jump against the way that they're spinning. It's so much easier to time your jump. I honestly thought that this giant spinner at the end was impossible to jump through, but if you jump and dive before you get to the top of that hill, nine times out of 10, you'll just slip underneath and onto the last part of the level. One final tip for all you bullies out there, you can guard this last jump with your body and have so many people just fall. It's horrible, but sometimes you just wanna watch the world burn, you know? Next up is Fruit Shoot. I just love the sound of this one. Fruit Shoot. For this one, I think it's always smart to wait for that first wave of fruits to go past before you jump to the conveyor belt. Anyone who gets on too soon always seems to get beaten by those apples. My other trick is just to stay to the sides and as close to these pyramids as possible. They block so much fruit from smashing directly into you, it's kinda incredible. Now onto the last of the race levels, it's Slime Climb. I know a lot of people like to bounce off this little triangle to get an early lead, but most of the time, I don't even bother with it. Instead, I like to make up my time by going to the very far right of this conveyor belt section and then just running straight across. You pretty much don't run into anything that way. And don't forget to jump in the middle of the yellow bars and don't jump again, you'll fall off. I swear, every time. Next up, let's talk survivor levels. First of which will be Tail Tag. I found that running in and out of this central part with a giant mallet is actually a really good way to keep your tail safe. Even if someone comes in and steals your tail, it's really difficult for them to get out safely, so you have a good chance of getting it back. Oh, and more than any other level in this entire game, do not celebrate early. This has happened to me so many times, I don't even wanna talk about it. Do you think that we can get a petition to get perfect match out of the game? Does anyone else think it's just the most boring level ever? Anyway, love you fall guys. I basically have the memory of a goldfish, but I've never lost this level just by staying in the corner and watching where the majority of people go. 
If you're on a square by yourself during the last match of this game, you are not on the right square. I guarantee it. Up next, it's time for a block party. This one's also pretty simple in my opinion. All you gotta do is stay as close to the front of the platform as possible. It's super easy to dodge everything and just don't get too close to that edge or else people might try to push you off. Nowhere else in this game does getting grabbed freak me out as much as when it happens on this level. It's rollout. I find it's easiest to survive just by moving between two of the platforms on the end, just crossing back and forth between them and not really worrying about any of the other rings on the level. And if someone's trying to be a little and wants to grab you, wait until they're near one of the ledges of the rings and grab them and you can just pretty easily push them off. Like, oops, my bad. Oh lordy, up next is the chaos that is tiptoe. Much like DoorDash, with this one I usually tend to stay behind at the beginning of the level and wait for everyone else to find out where the path actually begins. I've also noticed that there's never just one tile in front of the finish line that's real, so as soon as you see two tiles that haven't wobbled, it's safe to say that you're ready to beeline it to that exit. Last up in the survivor levels is Jump Club, and the tricks here will also help you in Jump Showdown if you're currently fighting for the crown. For this one, I really just like to stand still and press the jump button when you have to jump over the green bar. For most of the level, that's all you really need to be worried about. The only time that I do move is when I see that the green bar and the pink bar are gonna be lined up by the time that they get to where I currently am. So I run along with the green bars to make sure that they're out of sync so I don't get pushed off the level. Now, if you do see them coming up at the same time and you don't have time to get out of the way, it's easy to just do a quick jump. You're more likely to get shoved between the two poles rather than just getting swept off your feet altogether. Ah, time for the bane of my existence. It's team games. First up, Egg Scramble. It might be kind of boring to play this way, but I've noticed that it's easiest to just play defensively, especially once your team already has one of the golden eggs. By holding onto the eggs, it makes it harder for the enemies to grab them, and you can even position yourself with eggs around you, so the enemy team is more likely to grab one of those eggs rather than grabbing your back and ripping the egg out of your hands. Rock and roll, baby. For this one, if I don't immediately get control of the ball, I like to hang to the sides of the ball, so I'm there to correct in case it starts to go off course. And if worse comes to worst and you're on one of the last two teams and everyone's fighting over both balls, I found it's really good to go and just start grabbing enemies of the other team. It really messes with their strategy. Oh, fall ball, I hate you. Everyone knows that defense is the best offense, so I won't list that as a hint here, but did you know when you push a ball into a goal and then fall into the goal with it, you actually reset just in time to jump and then headbutt the ball directly into the opponent's goal with no opposition whatsoever. Watch out! Is it just me or does Jinx remind anyone else of the infection game mode from all the old Halo games? Honestly, this one's kind of a show, but I gotta say the spinning platforms do offer a good bit of security when you stand in the middle of them. I like to just get jinxed early on because I trust myself to take out the competition <laughs> rather than these random strangers I'm teamed up with. Up next, it's Hoopsie Daisy. This one's really fun. I feel like the main helpful strategy here is that if you notice one side of the map is much more crowded than the other, just beeline it to the other side and you'll have a much greater chance of getting these hoops for yourself. Also, I've generally found that it's easiest to get through most of the hoops by diving rather than just solely jumping through them. Yay, we're almost done talking about the team games. Anyways, the last one is hoarders. I'd say this is another defense is the best offense situation. I like to hang out where the edges of each goal meet facing towards the goal that I'm currently trying to defend. I find it easier to bounce balls that are headed out back in rather than bouncing balls that are out to in. Does that make sense? Bum, bada bum, 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 bum. It's time to fight for the crown in these finale stages. Up first is the aggro crag incarnate, Fall Mountain. The avalanche of giant balls is definitely the main thing to watch out for in this level, so I like to keep my eyes on the cannons to make sure that I know where the balls are coming from so I can easily avoid them, like most of the time. The other main tip here is just to know that you can't grab after you dive, so whatever you do, do not dive for the crown. Just jump. I can't decide because all the finale stages are pretty intense, but I think Royal Fumble really is the most stressful for me. To cope with this stress, I found that it's actually easiest to not do anything for like the first minute of this minute and a half game. But once it gets down to 30 seconds, I start following the pack and try to make sure that I'm there to grab the tail when things go awry. And last but certainly not least, because I've basically already told you how to win Jump Showdown, it's Hexagon. So I know that everyone's seen people using that slowly jumping technique near the end of the game, but I really think that until the last two levels, it's in your best interest to just clear as many of the hexagons as you can so that people above you just fall through those holes all the way to the bottom. Then near the end of the match, once you're on that last yellow level is when I start doing the slow jump technique, all while keeping an eye on the blue level below so that if I need to drop down, I have my eyes on the place with the most hexagons available to me.
And that, my friends, is how you win every single level in Fall Guys. Good luck and happy falling. Hey guys, Jared here. I hope you liked that video. If you did, leave us a like. Make sure to subscribe and check out the other videos that we got hanging out on our channel. They're all pretty fun. <laughs>